Hello everyone and welcome back to our original Mishtabura share, Agut Mayid. I am recording this share on Erev Yom Tiv of the second days of Pesach. I hope everyone's having a wonderful, 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 beautiful Yom Tiv. And now it's a pleasure to continue on here in Chelik Beis. In today's share, Emir Tzashem, we will be learning Daf Beis, Amit Beis, as well as a nice piece of Gimel Amit Aleph, I hope. I would like to do that so that we don't lose time on the Dirshu schedule because of Yom Tov. So, we pick up today, we are up to the final words on Bez Amun Aleph in the Mechaber, but I'm just going to read quickly from the beginning of Sif Bez for context. The Mechaber said here in Sif Bez, Kol Kayin she'en by echad me'advarim ha'ma'akvim, any Kayin that does not have one of the factors that disqualifies him from performing Berches Kehanim, Im ene oilu leduchen, if he does not go up to do if he does not go up to do Berkas Kahanim, Afa Pisha Bitel Mitzasase Akas, even though in reality he's only being Mavatal one Mitzasase, and that would be the Mitzasase of Koi Sevarachu, the Tarak Doisha gives the Kayan Mitzasase Daraisa of Koi Sevarachu, so shall you bless. The Bnei Yisrael. Still, in all, the Mechaber says, "Hareze kitoiver b'shalish atse." It's as if he is transgressing three mitzvahs atse. Why? Because you also have the pasuk of Amar Lahem and the pasuk of Vesamu es Shimi al Bnei Yisrael. Now, this is an interesting concept, and if I have time, I'd love to get into it. What exactly does this mean? That even though he's only being mavata one mitzvah say, it's as if he's being mavata three, but we don't have time for that right now. But in any case, that's what the Bechavri said here in the beginning of Sif Beis. Now, we are up to the final two words on Beis Amad Aleph. Continues the Bechavri, and the Bechavri says, In Mahaya Bebeis HaKneses Kishahon Kishakaru Kaihanim. When does this apply? This applies if the Kayan was in the shul when the Shleach Tzibur called out, Kaihanim, right? If he wasn't in the shul when they called the Kaihanim, so he's not being Mavatal Mitzvah by not going up to the Duchen, but if he was in the Beis HaKnesses when the Shleach Tzibur called out, Kaihanim, so now he was called to go up to the Duchen, I am Amru Lalois, or if it wasn't so formal, it's not that the Shlech Tzibur called out, Kayanim. Maybe somebody in the Tzibur turned to the Kayan and said, Nunu, go up to the Duchen. I am Amr Loi Lalois, I Lital Yadav. Or maybe the Levi came to the Kayan and said, Nu, let's go, it's time to wash your hands. Any of those things are considered calling the Kayanim to go up to the Duchen. If the Kayan is called to go up to the Duchen and he does not do so, despite the fact that he doesn't have one of the disqualifying factors that would disqualify him from doing Berches Kayanim, then he's Mavatl, technically, one Mitzvah Seh Daraisa, but like the Mechaber says, and this is really taken from the Rambam, it's as if he's being over three Mitzvah Seh Daraisa. Let's take a look here in the Mishtabura. We're up to the Mishtabura on Beis Amit Beis, Mishtabura Ois Katan Tes. Says the Chavetz Chaim, Kishikare Kaihanim. This applies when the Shliat Tzibur calls out, Kaihanim, explains the Chavetz Chaim. Why? Why is that so? Why is the transgression of the Mitzvah say dependent on the Kaihanim actually being called up? Explains the Chavetz Chaim, Tabalav Hachi Eine Oila. Very interesting halacha, because if the kaihanim are not formally called up to go to the duchen, they're not allowed to go up. Where does that come from? Dixiv, because take a look at what the Pasik says. The Pasik says, Omar lohem, kai sevarachu es b'nei Yisrael. The Rabbi Yisrael tells Moshe Rabbeinu to instruct the kaihanim, kai sevarachu es b'nei Yisrael, so shall you bless the b'nei Yisrael, Omar lohem, tell them, instruct them. That means that they have to be called up. And if you want to see how we know that, on the if you look at the Targum it says, Kad Yemrun Lahoin. When you say to them, when you say to them that they should bench Kla Yisrael, that's when they should bench Kla Yisrael. Vahu Kriyas Kaihanim Sha'anu Oimrim. And that is a reference to the calling up of the Kaihanim that we do when the Shlatzibur calls out, Kaihanim, Vain Likabe Besif Katan Yud. And we can see this. Further on in this simon in Sif Kat Yud. 
The cost of Amagin Avram. The Amagin Avram writes, and this is also a very interesting halacha that I think most people other than Kaihanim are not aware of. And that is that the the Kaihanim, they have an obligation that when it comes to Ritzei, let's remember that Ritzei is the bracha of Avoida. Now we call our entire tefillah Avoida. When Nishalma parim Asifasenu, our, the words of our lips stands in place of our carbonus. So we call the Tvila Avoida. But we have the bracha of Ritzei, it begins with Ritzei, it ends Hamachzeh When we get up to the bracha of Ritzei, when we have Duchening, the Kaihanim are supposed to move their feet, they're supposed to be Okar Raglov, to walk towards the Duchen. They're called, we're now in the bracha of Avoida. And the Brichus Kaihanim is part of the Avoida. So when we have the Brach of Ritzei, the Kayan is supposed to start walking towards the Duchen. Very interesting. We're going to see later. Let's say you have a Kayan who's a little bit, uh, shall we say, spaced out. Or he's just so involved in Kavana by Chazar Hashatz that he loses track of that it's Yom Tev, that he has to Duchen. And comes Ritzei and he stays by his seat. He doesn't budge. And it comes Ritzei, and finally the, the Chazit says, Baruch Baruch Ata Hashem, Shoyzcha Levadai, Bira Navoid. Now the Brach of Ritzei is over. And now the Kayan, when he heard Shoyzcha Levadcha, Bira Navoid, he realizes he's going to have to do him. But he didn't budge from his place during the Brach of Ritzei. He's not allowed to do him. He's not allowed to do him. That's it. He's not allowed to do him. He, he, since he wasn't Oikar Raglov, since he didn't get up to go towards the Duchen, when it came the Brach of Ritzei, he is now disqualified from Duchening. Therefore, says the Magen Avram, let's go right through the Mishtabru here. Based on this halacha, the Mishtabru says, the cost of a Magen Avram, the Magen Avram writes, this idea that if the Kayhanim are called up to go to the Duchen, and a Kayan fails to respond, and he doesn't go to the Duchen, he's over on Mitzvah Se Daraisa, says the Magad Avram, the Dafka Sha'oka Raglov Ba'avoida. But this is only true if he did what he was supposed to do during the Bracha of Ritzei, and he started to approach the Duchen. Avalam Loyaka Raglov, but if he wasn't Oyka Raglov by Ritzei, ain't a Rashoy Lalois. He's no longer allowed to Duchen. Ukidal Kaman Besifches, like we're going to see later on in Sifches. Va'afta Hakazid Kara Kayhanim. Even though the the shots called out Kayhanim, Oisha Amaloy Betheirish Lalois, or even if somebody turned to this Kayan and said, Rebbe Kayan, no, you got to go up to Duchen, Eina Oiver Base, he's still not over a Mitzvah because he's now disqualified from Duchening because he wasn't Oikaraglov during the Bracha of Ritzay. So says the Mishtabur over here from the Mogan Avram. Vel Yerabah, Yel Yerabah, Hevi, Bishem, Chuvis, Maram, Mintz. Now, your Rabbi brings down from the Marar Mintz, Shemistapik Bazer, he has a doubt about this. And we're going to see this is going to come into play later on also. The El Yerabba brings down from the Marar Mintz that could be, even if the Kayan wasn't Oikar Raglov by Ritzei, but somebody specifically told him to go up to the Duchen, maybe he's still Mechayiv to go. al Cain therefore says to Mishra Bura, Yesh Lizar, we should take care, Shaloi Liyos Oz Bebeis HaKnesses, a Kayan who wasn't Oikar Raglov during Ritzei, and now it's too late, they already said, Shai Salavat Chabir Anavayid, you know what he should do? He should leave the shul before they call out Kayhanim. Because if he's going to be in the shul when the shot calls out Kayanim, now he's going to land up in this suffolk of the El Yaraba in the name of the Maramins. That may be, even though you weren't Oikaraglov during Ritzei, but you were there when the shot said Kayanim, or somebody instructed you go up to the Duchen, could be your Mechayiv to go. Therefore, the best thing would be leave the shul. Obalavach, he says to Mishnaburi, even without this question, Yesh Lasois Kane, a kind who failed to be Oikar Raglov during Ritzei, anyway should leave the shul for another reason. Because if you're going to have a Kayan standing by his seat in the base of Knesset during Berkha's Kayan, and people are going to look at him and they're going to say, why isn't this Kayan Duchening? And they're going to say, oh, he must be a Kayan Pogum. Must be his father is a, is a Garush or something. 
Because how are the people who see him sitting by his seat, how are they supposed to realize that, oh, it must be he wasn't Oikaraglov during Ritzay. So if they see him by his seat and they see he's not going up to the Duchen, they're going to end up casting aspersions on his Yichus, and we don't want that to happen. Ois cotton Yud. The Mechaber said that uh, this applies the the question of being over on the mitzvah say daraisa applies if you were in the shul when they called out kaihanim, or if they somebody instructed him go up to the duchen, or somebody instructed him to go wash his hands. Ois cotton yud says chavetz chaim oy im amrulai zek koy gamke kishahayu bebezekneses v'loy kishah amrulai bachutz says the mishnah bura all of these things apply only if the kain is in the shul, if the kain is in the lobby. And somebody goes over to him and somebody says, no, 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 go duchen. He's not in the shul. So the instruction, go duchen, doesn't mean anything. If the levy comes to him outside in the lobby and says, no, wash your hands, I'm not in the shul. The, the chiv of going up to the duchen cannot land on the kayan. It can't be chal on him if he's not in the basic nesis. Rak the bar, mechaber, l'hoireis lanu. But what the mechaber is coming to tell us over here when the Mechaber says that the Chiv to Duchen is Chal, not only if the Shatz calls out Kaihanim, but even if somebody personally instructs him, Rebbe Kayin, go Duchen, or somebody tells him, go wash your hands, what the Mechaber is trying to tell me is, there's no Nafgamina Lahalacha, Bain Tevas Kaihanim, Shekare Achazin Bechlal Lechala Kaihanim. There's no magical halachic difference, there's no great significance to the Shlich Tzibur calling out, Kayanim, that that's what it takes to create the Chiv Tuduchen, Aisha Armerloi Beprat Lalois, or the guy who's sitting next to the Kayan says, Nu Go Duchen. That's the same thing. One, the, the calling out of the Shlich Tzibur is not more significant than that. Or if the Levi or the or the Bechar goes ahead and tells him, "No, come wash your hands," to whom Rabbi's which is clearly an indication that it's time to do Berachas Kayanim. Kulam Bechlal Amar Lahem. All of these things are included under the rubric of when the pasuk says Amar Lahem that you should instruct the Kayanim to go do Berachas Kayanim. And therefore, since Omar Lahem was fulfilled, now the Chiv to perform Berchus Kehanim has landed on the Kayan, and if he just doesn't go up to Duchen, despite not having any disqualifying factors, he's over on one assay, and it's as if he's over on three. The And again, let's remember that according to the Magan Avram that we brought down, this is only talking about in a case, where the Kayan did what he was supposed to do, and he was Oikaraglov during the Baruch of Ritzei. If he didn't, then according to the Magad Avram, he's disqualified from Duchening. If he's disqualified from Duchening, you can't say he's over on an assay by not Duchening. The Chavetz Chaim says, and furthermore, take a look at the Bir Halacha, where we explain further, that these words of the Mechaber also include, if before the end of the bracha of Ritzei, before she'oiz chalavadcha b'yir anavod, to haya oz b'yecholter laka ragla v'loi ratza, to ever ba'asei l'chulei alma. Let's say in middle of the bracha of Ritzei. So right now the kain still has time to properly be oik raglav. It's thought to approach to duchen. If somebody tells him then, nu nu, go duchen. So that's, in, that's considered an instruction to duchen. And now, if he's not Oikaraglov during Ritzei, he's going to be over on the Asei Daraisa. And take a look at what we write. Further, now we go to Sif Gimel. Sif Gimel, top line in the Mechaber. Im Allah Pam Achas If a Kayan already duchened one time today, Shuv ain't over. Let's say a Kayan davened by a 7 o'clock minion. He davened by the 7 o'clock minion, and he duchened by the 7 o'clock minion. Now, he decided they're not having the suda until 1 o'clock. He decided to stay in shul, learn the daf, chazer dirshu, and learn some shnayis. So now he's sitting in shul. Meantime, the 9 o'clock minion is davening. 
Baruch Hashem, this fellow is learning for a nice long time. It comes time for duchening. Is he bechuyiv to go up to the duchen now? Are we going to say this? They call out kaihanim, and he doesn't go up to the duchen. He's over and I'm to say daraisa. Says the mechaber, no. Im ola pamachas biyom zev. You're ready duchen on one day. Shuv ene over. You're not going to be over and I'm to say daraisa if you don't duchen again. Afilu omru loyale. And this is true even if they tell him nu go up. Doesn't matter. He doesn't have a chiv to. Says the Mishnah Baruch is cutting it off. Shuvene over. Hainu i isra me late sibur achrina, meaning that he he duchened in one sibur, and now it came that he happens to be present when this duchening by another sibur. Vatam. The rationale why he's not over a nase is Kevin shekvar kia mitzvah zu biyomzeh. Since he was already mekayim the mitzvah of duchening once on this day, loy chivatu at Torah yoser. The Torah is not mekayim him to do more than that. When we come up him, nevertheless, im ala pam shenis, if he chooses to go duchen a second time, tsarich levarich mitchila habracha asher kiddushanu b'mitzvaysa b'kiddushasei shalaren b'tzivanu. Take out the word b'mitzvaysa, that's inappropriate. It should read, asher kiddushanu b'kiddushasei shalaren b'tzivanu. The, the Mr. Brew is telling you, even though I'm telling you that he does not have a chiv daraisa to go duchen a second time, if he does duchen a second time, he could still, and he must still, make a bracha and say, Vitzivanu levarech es amo Yisrael. That'll come upon him oisa mitzvah, because he is being a kaima mitzvah. Even if it's another minion in the same shul, you go duchen a second time, you, you, you're being a kaima another mitzvah, so you make the bracha, Asher Kedushanu B'Kedushasei Shalaroin, Vitzivanu. Levarich Esamu Yisrael Ba'ahava. Sif Dalid. Says the Mechaber. Kishekayanim enom roitzim la'alois leduchen. Now, very interesting word uh, verbiage over here. The, if a kayan does not want to go to the duchen, it sounds very much like, eh, you know, he just chose. He doesn't want to go duchen. Okay, we know that that's not an option, right? If you choose not to duchen, we just said you're over on an Asay Daraisa. So says the Mishnah right away over here in Ois Katan Yud Beis, let's just read the first words. Kesha Kehanim Enam Roitzim, Kegoin, for example, and he brings this down from the Rosh in the name of the Yerushalmi. What does this mean? Kegoin Shehu Chalash, the Kadaima. Let's say he's ill. You have a kain who's ill. He's not able to go up to the duchen. So it doesn't mean that he doesn't want to. You have to. You're mechuyiv to. If you're in the shul, we just said you have a chiv to go up to the duchen. If you don't, you mavatl mitzah say daraisa. One, maybe three. Or it's as if it's three. So when the mechaber says, kish kaihanim enam roitzim lalis leduchen, it means that for some reason he can't go up to the duchen like he's ill. So now the question becomes, how should he comport himself? He's a Kayan. It's time for Duchening. He's not going up to the Duchen. At the same time, he doesn't have any of the disqualifying factors that we're going to learn about later that render him disqualified to Duchen. So it's not shot, oh, he's not Duchen because he's disqualified. No, why isn't he Duchening? It comes it brings about a question. What's this Kayan doing? Over here, he's not Duchening. And also there's another question. We said that there's a Khiv Daraisa Khal on him to go duchen. Okay, he has a good reason why he's not duchening. He's chalash, he's weak, he's ill. But still in all, how should he comport himself? Should he just stay in the shul when the Shatzibah calls out Kayanim? Says the Mechavah, not like this. Kisha Kayanim, enam roitzim lalis leduchen. If a Kayan has a valid reason why he does not want to duchen, enam tzrichem lisha is chutz vibes hakneses, he doesn't have to stay out of the shul, Ella bishosha kariah chazid kaihanim. Only when the chazid calls out kaihanim. So read between the lines. What's the mechaber saying? The mechaber is saying you have a valid reason not to go duchen, but you don't have any of the disqualifying factors. Get out of the shul before the shliach says kaihanim, because you don't want the chiv to be chal on you. So says the mechaber, you don't have to stay out of the shul. Only when the Shatz calls out Kayanim, between the lines, when the Shatz calls out Kayanim, don't be in the shul, because we don't want the Chiv to be Chal on you. But you don't have to be out of the shul, only when the Shatz calls out Kayanim. 
Avo, however, says the Mechaber, since we don't want anybody to look at this Kayan and say that he's a Kayan Pogum, Nagu, the Minig has become, the Minig has become that the Kayan should stay out of the Shul until after Berkes Kayanim. So again, the case of the Mechaber is we have a Kayan who's weak, he's ill. So he doesn't want to go up to the Duchen. And he has a valid reason. He's not being over. He's not being mavatl and it's not say Bishot Nefesh, that he just doesn't want to go Duchen. No, he has a valid reason. Still in all, he doesn't have any of the disqualifying factors. So, Me'ikaradin, we want him out of the shul when the Shatz calls out Kayanim so that the Chiv shouldn't be him. Technically speaking, once the Shatz calls out Kayanim and he wasn't in the shul, really he could come back. But the Mechaber says, there's another problem. We don't want anybody to look at this Kayan who's in the shul and who isn't duchening and say, oh, he must be a Kayan Pogum. So in order to get out of that problem, the minute became that he should stay out of the shul for the entire Berchas Kayanim. Says the Mishnah is cut in your base. Kishkayanim enim roitzim. Kigayin shulchalash v'chadoyma. V'ayim b'magin Avram, the Chavetz Chaim says, take a look at the Magen Avram, Shekasav, who writes, B'Shem HaMardachai, in the name of the Mardachai, Shehayoytze, that a Kayan who goes out, Tzarech Lotzei's Kayanim, Shemaschil and Ritzei. He should go out, not just before the Kayan calls out Kayanim. He should go out before Ritzei. V'atam, the reason is, K'day Shalom Yomru Shehem Pegumim, K'shalom Yakru B'Ritzei. Because remember, we already said the Halacha, that the Kayan is supposed to be Oikaraglov during Ritzei. If people are going to see that this Kayan wasn't Oikaraglov during Ritzei, they're already going to say that he's a Kayan Pogum. V'gam Shalaviyam Ayotz Gemayim, Lo Yavayu V'yomru Hemlohem Lalois. And the El Yerabah is Lishitasai, what we learned earlier. The El Yerabah says there's another problem. What's going to happen if he's there by Ritzei? He knows he's not going to do him. So he's not going to be Oikaraglov by Ritzei. Now maybe the Levi is going to come to him and say, no, no, come wash your hands. Now we already learned that from the Mechaber that if the Levi says, come wash your hands, that's as if you heard Kaihanim. So now, what is it going to help that you weren't in the shul when you heard, when they said Kaihanim? The Levi told you, come wash your hands. That's the equivalent of hearing Kayanim. Now the Chiv was already chal on you. And according to the El Yeraba, the Chiv is already chal on you to the extent that even if you're not Oikaraglov during Ritzei, you still have a Chiv to go up to the Duchen. So therefore, the El Yeraba says, get out before Ritzei. So it would come out that the Kayan, who is not going to Duchen, should leave the Shul before Ritzei, and he should not come back until leave the Berkus Kayanim. The Kasva Paiskim, the Paiskim write, those who are puzzled to Duchen, even those who are puzzled to Duchen only within the Rabbanon, they don't have to leave the shul. Because when the Shlech Tzibur calls out Kayhanim, he's not talking to those who are puzzled. And they also reach a consensus that even if somebody turns to the Kayan who's puzzle, even if he's puzzle only with the Rabbanon, somebody turns to him and specifically tells him, no, go up to the Duchen, or the only Kayanim in the Shul are those who are puzzle. If the only Kayanim that are in the Shul are Kayanim Psulim, then for sure when the shots called out Kayanim, that's who he was talking to. There are no other Kayanim there. Still, they're not Mechuyiv to go up. And they're certainly not over on a Mitzvah to How could you say he's over on a Mitzvah He's not refusing to go up to the Duchen on his own. He's not going up to the Duchen because the Chazal told him he can't. It's the Chazal that are holding him back from going up to the Duchen. So he's not being over him. It's Tasei Daraisa. The Yesh Kayach Biyadam Lasa is there. Very key phrase here in the Mishnabura. You'll ask me, what do you mean? What, what does it mean that there's a Psalm and there are from Duchening? The Chiv to Duchen is in the Mitzvah Tasei Daraisa. How, the, how could the Chachamim come and tell a Kayan, no, your apostle, Midra Bonon, don't go be Mekayim Mitzvah Tasei Daraisa? The answer is the golden rule, which is that Yesh Kayach Biyad HaChachamim, the Chachamim have the Kayach, Levatel Mitzvah Tasei Daraisa, to be Mevatel Mitzvah Tasei Daraisa, Bishev Al Taisa, by telling somebody that he should sit and not perform a Mitzvah. In other words, they're not telling somebody to go 
<coughs> actively be over on a daraisa. They're telling somebody to passively be over a daraisa. They're telling him to passively not be mekayim a daraisa that the chazal have the kayak to do. So the yesh kayak the adam lastly said. When we come akim, nevertheless, says the mishnah brura. If you talk, I have a case where the only kayanim in the shul are kayanim that are possible to rabbanon from duchening, mitzadeid el yarabah, the el yarabah takes the position, that the kayanim should leave before ritzay. The chain mashma may agos rabbi yakiva eger, ayin shum. I've cut new gimel. The mechaber said, they don't have to be out of the shul only when the shots calls out kaihanim. But we're knowing that they should stay out for the whole Berkhus Kehanim. Says the Chavetz Chaim is cutting your gimel, bottom line, base of base. El of Ishar, it's saying the Loimar. Umemela, since they're out of the shul when the shots calls out kaihanim, ain't chalalem shuv chiv afilu kishi kantsuakakach. If they're out of the shul when the Shliat Zibra calls out kaihanim, then the chiv wasn't chal on them. And even if they come back afterwards, the Chiv doesn't land on them. The Kedizka Le'el Basif Beis. Ois Katn Yudalit, Shem Pekumim. The Minig became that they should stay out for the whole Berkhus Kayanim, so nobody should say that they're a Kayan Pogum. Ritzayin Aloymar Bnei Grusha U Bnei Chalutza. Somebody will say, oh, this Kayan must be a Cholol. He must be the son of a Kayan who improperly married a Gorosh, a divorcee, or some a woman who underwent Chalitza. Now we turn to Sif Hay. Top line, Gimel Amin Aleph. Says the Mechaber. And this is a very, very well-known halacha, but I'm willing to bet the vast majority of Yisraelim, at least, don't know the rationale behind it. Says the Mechaber. The Kahanim should not go up to Duchen while they are wearing shoes. Avo bebote bebote shaykayim shari. But if they're wearing high boots, the Mishnah is going to say this means boots that go up almost to the knee, then they can, duchen, according to the Mechaber, with such boots. Says the Ramah, v'yesh machmirim, there are those that are machmir, imheim shel ur, if the boots are leather. He brings this down from the Aguda. And then says the Ramah, v'nagul ha'kel b'ktsas b'kaymais, in some places the meaning is to be makel, by such high boots. Okay, let's see what's at play over here. Says the Mishnah Barai's cotton tezvav, biminolim. Why can't the Kahanim duchen wearing shoes? There are a lot of people that think the reason the Kahanim don't duchen wearing shoes is because the Kahanim did not perform the Avoida in the base of Migdash, the Mehera Yibana Hamigdash, Benisan Nigalu, Benisan Asidin Ligalois. We should be Zaycha to the Avoida in the base of Migdash. There are those that think that the reason the Kayan doesn't duchen wearing shoes is because they didn't do the Avoida wearing shoes. The problem is that the Kahanim did the Avoida barefoot. And the reason the Kahanim did the Avoida barefoot was because there couldn't be a chatzitza between their feet and between the ritzpa, between the floor of the Azara. The Kahanim do not duchen barefoot. Matter of fact, we're going to see that it's improper for the Kahanim to duchen barefoot. But they do take off their shoes. So the fact that they take off their shoes, it would seem, is not because the Kahanim didn't wear shoes in the Beis HaMikdash. Says the Chavetz Chaim, you know why they take off their shoes? Very interesting reason. And this is a Gemara in Saita. Those of you who are learning Daf Yaimi, you'll get to it sooner than later. It's on Daf Mem in Saita. Says the Mishtabura, Shema ye pasek loy ritsua. The problem is that if they're wearing shoes, what happens if the shoelace bear breaks? Or I would venture to say, if the shoes become untied, Uginaihu loy. And now it's embarrassing for the Kayan. He's standing there with his untied shoes. He looks like a schlump. Umislites it similar. And he might feel. That people are laughing at him. Or maybe some people really are laughing at him. Chas v'chalila. And he senses that he's being laughed at. Kishe sandolo muteres. That he's standing there with an open shoe. So what's he going to do? V'yikshirena ba'ayit shechaver of mevarchim. Now he's going to bend down to tie his shoe while the other kayhanim are busy making the bracha of brichas kayhanim. So you got all the kayhanim standing there with their arms up under the talesim. Baruch Hashem, and this guy is bending down 
and he's tying his shoe. Oh, what's the problem? The Yomru, you always have those people who are smarter than everybody else who they, you know, interpret events. The Yomru, people are going to say, oh, Sheben Grusha Ben Chalutzahu. This guy must be a Kayan Pogum. He must be a Ben Grusha or Ben Chalutza, and he doesn't want to make a brothel of Atala. He doesn't want to do it. He knows he can't do it. So you know what he's doing? He's going and he's sitting down during the bracha. Then that's what he's doing. He's not tying his shoe. No. He's going and he's sitting down because he doesn't want to make the bracha because he's a kind pogum. And don't think fast on your feet and say, oh, so maybe they should do it wearing slip-ons. No, even slip-ons they can't do it with. Why? They're like Polig Rabbanon. Because we know the rule that when Chazal make a takana, they make a broad takana. They don't say black shoes, white shoes, red shoes, shoes with straps, not Velcro, buckles. No, they said no shoes, no shoes. And the Mishnah says they should put away the shoes discreetly the, the, the shul shouldn't look like a shoe store. There shouldn't be shoes laying around. So put it under the table. And they should take off the shoes before they wash their hands. But if they have the ability to kick the shoe off after they wash their hands without touching the shoes, they could take the shoes off after the teal. In other words, it's not a din that they have to take off the shoes before the tilts you die. The problem is that if they're going to take off their shoes after the tilts you die and they're going to touch their shoes, they got to wash their hands again. So if they can kick off their shoes after the tilts you die, fine, they can. Ice cotton design. The Mishnah said, Ava Bapate Shekayim. But with high boots, there are those that say, the Machaber said, that with high boots, you're allowed to do them. Says the Mishnah Ruhr, what about the Shekayim? Who Minalam Aruchim, these are long, high boots. Hamagim ad arkuba is haregel that come up all the way to the knee. Hainu samach lashoik almost by the thigh. The shari that's mutter. Why is that mutter? The leka hakatayma and this kalamayla because the 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 rationale that we mentioned earlier doesn't apply because for several reasons. First of all, to tie your shoe, you got to bend all the way down. To tie such a hard boot where the strap is all the way at the top of the boot, you don't got to bend down. So no one's going to see you bending down. They're not going to say that you're a kind pogum. And also, the gam hocha regilin lil pa'am and lasis or tzuei samach la arkuba. Become a kind, still at all, like haishin and shem yeshev la kashra. No one's going to think you're sitting down to tie No, you're not sitting down to tie it. That if you and also, it's not so embarrassing if the boot that's all the way high up by your knee is unstrapped at the top. It's not the same gnai as if your shoes that are by the floor are unstrapped and your laces are hanging all over the place and you look like a schlump. Ice cut in your zayin. Imheim shall are. There are most said, there are those that are machmir if the boots are leather. Taimam, their, their reasoning is, the beklal sandal aminol heim. Because if it's leather, it's a shoe. And like we said, like Polig Rabbanon, if Chazal made a tacon against wearing a shoe, this is a shoe. But like Polig Rabbanon, Ben Yesh Ritzuis, the Ben Ein Ritzuis, the same way the Chachamim weren't mechalik between slip-ons and tie shoes, they also weren't mechalik between shoes and boots. But how about, I don't know what the right word over here is, what comes to my mind is a fisherman who's wearing waders. So that's the pants are connected to the boot. So if you're wearing such a thing, so then it's not a boot, it's part of your pants. Mutter lekuliyama, that's mutter. Tzelai have a klal like zera klal because that was not part of the zera at all. The chenit bata shekayim shall beged also boots that are made out of fabric. Avshem a or even if they have some kind of a leather covering, shari afla deyazu. According to this opinion, they are mutter. Is cut in yutches. The Ramos said v'nagul hakel b'tas b'kaimais. In some places, the night to be makel on high boots. When we come alkaim the bata shekayim shalanu says the chavetz chaim our boots. Shekayin shtivel, sherekilin lelech ben bashuk petit, rain boots, mud boots, ain lahakel. On those, the Ramah says you should. Def- the uh, Mishnah Berurah says you definitely should not be makel. Mishum kavod at zibur because it's not kavod at zibur to duchen in such boots. So nothing to do with the rationale of the takanas chazal. This is just it's not kavod at zibur to be duchen in wearing mud boots. According to this reasoning, gam b'minalim shall gemi shalanu. Also, our rubbers. Shekarin Kalosin. 
Gamkein ain't an ochim mitam zeh. That would also be a lack of covet at Sibur. Kasra akreinim the akreinim right. They ain't nakad lalas leduchin yachif mamish. You should not. It's improper to duchin mamish barefoot. Shehu derech kenai. That is um. Da, 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 da. What's the word I'm looking for? That is despicable. Shehu derech kenai. That's not. You don't go up to the tzibur to duchin barefoot. Shein megilim is manazel lelek yachif with negedolim. Nowadays we're not noyed to walk around barefoot. Especially not in front of Mechubedika people. So you don't get up in shul to do it in front of the Yaron HaKadish, in front of the Tzibor Birfot. El Yesh Lelech be Puzmikois. You should wear socks, shall beged, fabric socks, the chain, haminig, and that is the minig. We're going to stop over here. We'll continue next time, Yerts Hashem, with Davov. But Baruch Hashem, we got most of tomorrow's Dishu page done as well. So uh, hopefully we will not fall behind. Once again, a good moyed to one and all. Everyone should have a wonderful Yom Tov. Thank you so much for joining me for Leaving Our Torah. The discuss of Leaving Our Torah should be making against Klai Yisrael. The Rabbi Hashem should send Yeshua to first Panos and should to all those who need. And we should be zaychet to see the Biaskoyot Tzedek. Be meherav, be yameinu, amen, be well.